Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to 10 Easy Rare Houseplants. So many of you probably have a lot of rare houseplants on your wish list and I thought I would do this video because I feel like a lot of people are a little bit apprehensive about buying plants online because they think, you know, it won't arrive well, it might die, you know, can I take care of it? Is it difficult? And because I have bought quite a few houseplants online recently, I thought it'd be a good idea to make this video to give you the feedback that you might be looking for on, you know, what houseplants that I have at least are easy. So I will quickly go over what I kind of mean by easy because a lot of people might have their own interpretation of easy. You know, is a plant easy because it can go without water for a while? Is it easy because it doesn't need high humidity? So I've come up with a way of kind of feeding back to you guys how easy these plants are and I've basically decided to kind of do a rating system. So I'm going to take you through each plant I've picked and within that I'm going to discuss various points that I have found applicable to what, you know, makes a plant easy. The first is light and what I mean by that generally in this video is the tolerance of the plant towards low light. Not no lighting, but low lighting. Second is watering. I'm going to be rating each plant based on its tolerance to underwatering. And I've only really done that because honestly, overwatering kills most plants. So I didn't really think it was applicable. After that, we have humidity. And by humidity, I mean tolerance to low humidity. And I think for this video, I've kind of selected low humidity to be anywhere below 40%. So I'm going to class that for the purposes of this video as low humidity. Temperature as well. So how well does the plant deal with maybe temperature drops inside your house or generally cool? temperatures. And last but not least, I thought I would include something that some of you guys may be worried about and that is shipping. So how well the plant ships, you know, if you buy it online and it's sent in a parcel to you via the post. I'm going to rank this list already for you so you can kind of move up the ranks with me, but this list is ranked from the least easiest to the most easiest plant. So I'm going to start off with my least easiest plant, but it is still easy, if that makes sense. So my first easy rare house plant is one that I don't know if many people know about this plant actually. This plant here is is the philodendron mcdowell now this is not philodendron pastazanum we get this a lot on this channel there's so many plants that resemble other plants but this is often confused sometimes with philodendron pastazanum it's not it is different it looks very, very visually similar but generally it is much much easier to look after and i think that is because i mean i've got mine kind of staked here you can see here that the stem just appears to be, you know, a little bit thicker. For a big, you know, more luxurious heart leaf philodendron, I do find this one much easier than others. So I wanted to include this right off the bat because I know a lot of people love the idea of these beautiful big heart-shaped philodendrons, but they can't necessarily either find one that they think is not, you know, fussy, or maybe they're just, they're just a bit scared and a bit intimidated by them. This plant can handle reasonably low light, no more or less than any other philodendron, I wouldn't say, but it is something to note. When these plants are, you know, in their smaller stages, these can go, you know, with very little water, I find. I don't find that they need that much. As they mature, they probably will have probably a little bit of a larger consumption, but generally they're okay. Again, I do think that's because of the larger stems compared to a lot of other heart-shaped philodendron. In addition to that, these plants are reasonably humidity tolerant, so I reckon and you could easily get away with 40%, no problem. And it can also tolerate the odd temperature drop in your home. Again, a reasonably hearty, beautiful, big leaf, luxurious philodendron. Now, a quick word on shipping. They're okay when they ship, but there is something you must be aware of, and that is that a lot of sellers will actually remove the leaves of these before they ship. So sometimes, sometimes you will get a plant and it will actually have a few stems and, you know, some leaf buds of a leaf that's kind of on its way out or ready to come out. But generally speaking, a lot of sellers may remove the leaves. So if you get a plant in the mail and it has no leaves and they've, you know, they've been deliberately cut, they haven't just died and dropped off, I wouldn't be too worried. The seller should probably inform you that, you know, that it's going to be shipped without leaves. I would be a little bit surprised if they didn't. You can always ask if you're looking to buy one of these. But I really, really like these. It's one of my favorites because, as I say, it is a big heart shape and it's pretty easy. So here's a big heart for you guys. So for the philodendron McDowell, I would give light a four out of five. I give watering also, as I say, it can take a little bit of underwatering. That is also a four out of five. Humidity, generally humidity tolerant. So a three out of five. Temperature, it can tolerate the odd drop. So I'm giving that a three out of five as well. Shipping, as I just mentioned, you know, sometimes they have to be shipped without their leaves on and that can be a little bit, I don't know, a little bit off-putting for some people, so I'm giving shipping a 2, which gives us an average score of 3.2 out of 5. Moving on to the next plant on my easy rare houseplants list, and that is the Philodendron Florida Beauty. This is, well, I grew this out from a cutting that I got 
This is a brand new leaf here. Let me pop him down. I don't know if he can be seen there. I think he can. So starting off in terms of light, these this particular philodendron, I don't know if it's just because it was from a cutting, but this seems to grow very slowly for me. It is speeding up now that it's in spring, but generally speaking, I've actually found this one quite slow to grow compared to a few other philodendron on this list. So if you can get away with increasing the light on this particular philodendron, I would honestly give it a go and see if the growth rate actually improves. That said, it will tolerate lower light if needed. So this plant is not quite as good at being tolerant to you know underwatering as a lot of other philodendron and that is probably because of these much thinner stems just the way that they are structured should we say so it can go you know it is a little bit tolerant underwatering but nowhere near as much as some of the other ones on this list again due to its structure similarly with temperature they are slightly more delicate than other philodendron but honestly nothing too much to worry about they're just not going to like cooling down as much as some of the other thicker hardier philodendron in terms of shipping i've noticed this plant does ship okay however if you have bought a cutting and say you know take this leaf for example if one of your leaves is you know half variegated and half green and it's like in a massive sectoral piece it's quite likely that that variegation may kind of die in the male a little bit i've noticed variegation to be honest on most plants doesn't really survive the male if it's you know in a large sectoral chunk variegation like this will be absolutely fine this is one of the original leaves but i did actually have to cut off one of the older leaves because basically half of it was dead because half of it was beautiful yellow. I wouldn't worry too much about cutting leaves off like that because at the end of the day the variegation is still in the stem of the plant. A word of caution, these plants seem to really like reverting quite easily so if you do want one of these and you do want to keep up the variegation you may have to get a little bit scissor happy in order to do that but honestly I think they're worth it and even small amounts of variegation like this leaf here is absolutely fine. So for the Florida Beauty the ratings are as follows. Light I give that a three because as I say sometimes it's necessary to boost the light to get a little bit of a quicker growth rate although it can handle the same amount of light. Watering I give it a four. Humidity I give that a four. Temperature I give that a three and shipping I give that a three because as I mentioned that sectoral variegation there can kind of die on you a little bit but it won't harm the plant in any way. This gives us an average score of 3.4 out of 5. The next plant on my easy rare house plants list is none other than the philodendron pink princess. Yes, this is a small one. Uh, I actually chopped this back quite recently and it has new growth sort of stemming from it. This is a reasonably easy plant to keep. These philodendron are generally good in reasonably low lighting, although to be honest, if you want bigger leaves and you know a more bushy appearance, then you would be better off bumping the light. That said, you can of course keep this alive in reasonably low light. In terms of watering, these plants can also go, you know, a little bit without water. They don't have the most succulent stems on the planet, but they can go a little bit without water. If you do push it too far though, you will start getting a yellow leaf dropping off. I've had it happen. But generally, they're quite okay on the watering front. They're also very humidity tolerant. I think this will do just fine in 40% humidity. I don't really see any problems with it. The leaves are reasonably thick. They're not flimsy in any way. Therefore, the plant can really hold its own in an average, you know, 40% humidity situation as well. These plants can also cope with a little bit of chilled out temperatures. They aren't quite as finicky as some of the bigger, you know, more exotic philodendron. So I wouldn't worry too much about temperature drops in that case either. I mean, don't put it outside, but you know, it'll be okay. Not much to say on the shipping front other than they generally ship okay. I've never really heard of anybody having problems or anything else. The structure of them, you know, and the way they grow can sometimes make them slightly awkward to ship but generally I think they're absolutely fine. So for the Pink Princess I'm giving light a 4 out of 5, watering a 3 out of 5, humidity a 4 out of 5, temperature a 3 out of 5 and shipping a 4 out of 5 which gives us an average of 3.6 out of 5. The next plant on my easy rare house plants list is one of my favorite philodendron ever and that is the, let me grab it, the philodendron Florida ghost. I talk about this plant all the time because it is just so gorgeous. I will very quickly mention that this plant is different to the Florida Beauty that I just shown you, you know, a couple of plants ago there. And that is because these plants grow in with white leaves and over time the white leaf will fade down to a green. That's why I think this plant looks a little bit more white on camera. I do have some new growth in there as well. I don't know how easy that is to see. It's probably focusing on my face. So in terms of light, apparently in order to get, you know, the bright white coming through on new leaves, you do need to give this plant a little bit more light than maybe a typical philodendron. That said, they will take lower it just means that when the new leaves come through they might not be you know absolutely white they might come through more of you know sort of a cream 
Again, no problem, It's it will be fine. It's just if you really want that beautiful white pow. When the leaves come in, then I would perhaps try and bump the light if you're finding that yours aren't coming through that white and you should get brighter leaves coming in. I will say this very quickly, a lot of this plant's needs are going to be quite similar to the Florida Beauty because their structure, as you may be able to see here, is pretty much identical. So watering as well, they can take a little bit of underwatering, but not too much because of the stems, because they don't store you know, a lot of water in the stem. So you will have to be a little bit more attentive with watering, but nothing too much to worry about. It's generally still reasonably easy. I don't think I mentioned humidity on the Florida Beauty, but let me tell you, it is exactly the same as this one. Generally, I would prefer to give this plant a little bit more humidity than some of the other plants in this list. Again, just due to the fact that the leaves are a little bit more delicate and a little bit thinner, but nothing to write home about, maybe 60, 65%. Again, it will tolerate 40%. I just think personally it grows much better in higher humidity as to be honest most plants do so if you do want to bump your growth on any of your house plants try and bump the humidity and they will probably grow a little bit better temperature again they will tolerate a bit of a temperature drop but if you can keep them warmer they're going to be a lot happier again same as the florida beauty as well the one thing where this plant does excel over the philodendron florida beauty is its ability to ship and that is because obviously we don't get any variegation in this the white leaves popping through that's kind of that's not what it is uh, the leaves aren't any weaker for it they're just you know they're reasonably robust so in my opinion this ships a lot better due to that reason so some quick rankings for the florida ghost light i'm going to give that a three watering i'm giving that a four humidity i'm also giving that a four because as i say i know they prefer higher humidity but they will tolerate lower very very well generally temperature i'm giving that a three because they can be a little bit more on the flimsy side than some philodendron and shipping i'm giving that a four because it does ship much better than the florida beauty and the next plant on my easy rare house plants list is a hanging plant and it's not a hanging plant that most people may have in their homes or may have seen before so I really wanted to include it because it's really to me it's something quite special and that is the Anthurium vitari folium. Here is mine. It is wonderful. At the minute I actually have A a bloom and B a new leaf coming in. Here is a new leaf coming in. It's wonderful and it's also just blooming away. Absolutely stunning plant. I'm just going to drape it over here while I talk about the plant. <laughs> so this anthurium actually takes reasonably low light. I have this on top of one of my grow light shelves and it doesn't get the most light. The belts do hang down kind of near the grow lights so it gets some but I would say it was in quite low light to be honest with you and as I've just mentioned it has a new leaf that's coming in which is adorable by the way and it also has let me grab it it has a really cool bloom, which I just did not expect to have on this, which to me makes this a pretty easy plant because I also haven't watered it that much, to be honest with you. It's kind of been neglected a little bit. A quick note on the root system on these. When I was potting this up for the first time, I noticed the root system and the roots are really, really tuberous. I think this can withstand underwatering to a reasonable level, to be honest with you. Not only that, but I would say this is very humidity tolerant due to the fact that these kind of belt-like leaves, they're very rough, they're not flimsy, they're actually quite sturdy they're, they're almost like an actual belt that you could wear so for that reason they're pretty pretty sturdy when it comes to things like humidity as well in addition to that temperature they will take cooler temperatures but they would obviously prefer it and be happier and you know bloom in warmer temperatures so keep that in mind in terms of shipping this plant does ship well but obviously you might have a couple of complications due to its size that this ain't small of course you can probably get more juvenile plants where the, you know the belts aren't very long but providing they're curled around nicely in a box you should have no problems with them this is probably one of my favorite anthuriums that I own just because it's so different. So if you can get your hands on one of these and you want a hanging plant with, and it's just something totally different, please go for one of these. They're amazing. So for scoring on the Anthurium Vitari Folium, I'm giving light a 4, watering a 4.5 because as I say, those root systems are really tuberous. Humidity, I'm giving this a 3. It will tolerate lower humidity, but it would much prefer higher humidity in order to thrive. So if you want your plant to thrive, you may want to increase that humidity level. Temperature, as I say, it can cool down, but would prefer to stay a lot warmer. So I'm giving that a 3. And shipping, I'm giving that a 4, just on the basis that the seller packs the plant well and makes sure, you know, to take extra care with the long leaves. This gives the plant an average rating of 3.7 out of 5. And the next plant on our list for top 10 easy rare house plants is the Philodendron Moonlight. A lot, a lot of people love these plants. A lot of people seem to want this plant actually. So light, these Philodendron can take reasonably low amount of light and still remain very bushy 
and compact like this one appears to look right now. So that is a massive plus. In addition to that on watering, I don't know if you can see that. Tag might be in the way, but the stems on this plant are really, I, you know I've said this before if you watch my videos, but I call it chunky, really, really chunky stems. And the good thing about these stems is they can hold a lot of water, which makes the plant pretty tolerant to underwatering. And generally you probably find that you don't have to water the plant very much. It is one of my favorites as well because it doesn't give me any trouble. It's small, it's compact, it just sits there. They're also very humidity tolerant. This plant has no problem being sat in 40% humidity, no problem at all. It will not give you any trouble. Because the stems are chunkier and the root system is chunkier and it's just generally a hardier plant, it can take a temperature drop in addition to that. In terms of shipping, this plant does ship very, very well. Sometimes the leaves can get, you know, a little bit damaged just because this is very chunky and it's reasonably rigid in its form. But I think you won't really have any problems. You might have the odd leaf, you know, bent or tearing or something, but the plant will be absolutely fine. I would not worry about it at all. Any damage will be very minor and cosmetic and the plant should be able to handle being in a box for, you know, a period of a few days with no major problems. So the ranking are as follows for the Philodendron Moonlight. Light, I'm giving this a four out of five. Watering, I'm giving this plant a four out of five, mainly because of those wonderful chunky stems and the really tuberous root system it can take in underwatering. Humidity, I give this one a four out of five because it can take very low humidity. Temperature, again, three out of five. It can cool down if it needs to. And shipping, I give this a 3.5 out of five, just due to the rigid form of the plant and the ability or possibility, I should say, of leaves tearing or curling or anything like that. This gives the plant an average rating of 3.8 out of five. The next plant are my easy rare house plants. It's kind of two plants and they are similar enough that I just want to put them in the same bracket. So let me grab them. Them. And that is the Philodendron Billeti. Now I have here a regular Philodendron Billeti and I have here, it's just kind of behind it, a hybrid of Philodendron Billeti and Philodendron Atabapoensi. But for all intents and purposes, honestly, they have the same care. They're pretty much the same plant, to me at least. So both of these guys, because I'm just going to talk about them as a whole, they can handle reasonably lower light, although to be honest, I would prefer to give them medium light and upwards just to encourage their growth. I don't find them to be very fast growers. So again, if you can bump your light, then bump the light on these. When repotting these, I have also noticed that they have very, very good root system, very tuberous. You know, it's, the stems aren't very thick, but they're very sturdy. Like this plant holds its form very well. They can also tolerate lower humidity as well, but I would prefer to bump the humidity just to make sure that they grow a little bit faster, as I mentioned earlier as well. Temperature, they can take a drop, but they would also prefer not to. So it's kind of up to you in that sense, I guess. With regards to shipping, I've heard kind of mixed reviews on shipping. Some people say they ship fantastically and they just look, you know, exactly how they did when they entered the box, just when they come out of the box. Some people say they ship terribly and they just don't do that well. I found they ship beautifully, um, probably due to their structure. They just don't seem to move around a lot. They, the roots are very tolerant. They just seem to be generally all-rounders when it comes to that kind of thing. I would say once this plant goes in the box, what comes out at the other end is pretty much going to be identical to what went in. So I would rate these very, very good on the shipping front as well. So based on an equal score between the pair of these plants, I'm giving them the following ratings. Light, I would give these about a three. They can take lower light, but honestly, as I mentioned before, it would be better to bump the light if possible. Watering, a four, because the roots are very, very tuberous and the stems seem to do just fine. Humidity, I give them a 4.5 because they prefer higher humidity to grow. Temperature, they can cool down quite a bit and still remain the same. You know, their form won't change. Shipping, I also give them a 4.5 out of five. And that is because generally the way they go in the box is probably how they're going to come out of the box. All of these things comprise to give the plant an overall average score of four out of five. So getting pretty good at this point in our list. Next on the list of easy rare house plants, I have a Monstera, finally, and my Monstera of choice is the Monstera Dubaia. Now, this plant is reasonably easy to look after. Uh, a quick note on, you know, how it is currently sat in the pot. I am getting a plank of wood. My friend from work, James, is cutting me a plank of wood, probably not quite as we speak, but I will be getting a plank of wood very soon. That is how these plants prefer to grow. In terms of light, this plant can tolerate a lower amount of light and still do just fine. To be honest, it should remain reasonably unaffected. So for humidity, 
humidity, this plant does prefer kind of higher numbers and that's because if you don't give it enough humidity, the leaves are probably going to start curling up and getting a little bit crispy. So if you notice that happening, but you think your plant has enough water, I would bump the humidity around it if you can, just to stop those leaves from getting a little bit crispy because we don't want crispy. You know what we say about crispy, we want our plants sexy and not crispy. Temperature, this plant can take a cooler temperature if needed because most Monstera can, if I'm honest with you, but generally just keep this one a bit warmer. As I say, keep all your plants warmer if you can, but if you can't, I wouldn't worry too much about this one. Don't lose too much sleep, it should be okay. Last but not least, this plant does ship very, very well indeed. Mine was just literally immaculate when I got mine, and I actually think that's due to the flexibility and just how this plant grows. You can package this very well inside a box with whatever padding or whatever wrapping that the seller is going for. So I find that these do ship very, very well indeed. <coughs> yes. That totally wasn't a gnat! <laughs> So for the Monstera Dubai, my rankings are as follows. For light, I'm giving this a 4.5 because it can take a surprisingly low amount of light to what you may expect. Watering, I'm giving this a 4. Humidity, I'm giving this a 3 just because, again, if the leaves do get crispy, then you need to bump that humidity because the plant isn't quite happy enough. Temperature, I'm giving this a 4 because it can cool down if it has to. And shipping, due to its flexibility, I'm giving this one a 5 out of 5, which gives us an average score of 4.1 out of five which is getting better we're getting into the fours now so these are getting a little bit easier so the second to last plant on my easy rare house plants list is the anthurium clarinervium now this anthurium is just the best anthurium you could ever hope to have it is so easy to care for let me just start by saying that this plant can tolerate pretty low levels of light and to be honest with you still bloom because mine is not taking a lot of light at all and i don't know if you can see this here but this plant is blooming and growing absolutely no problem in reasonably low light, which does impress me, I'm not gonna lie. In addition to that, this plant, for some reason, my plant gets very, very dry very quickly. I suspect that's because it's due a repot, but even then I don't water it maybe as often as I should do. And this plant is coping just fine. If you do underwater this, the roots will plump straight back up once you have watered it again. So for that reason, it is pretty tolerant on the watering front as well, which I wouldn't expect for an anthurium, but it is it's really really good it's a little bit of a trooper actually they are even humidity tolerant this plant will take 40 percent no bother it can take more all of these plants i mentioned in this list can take more humidity but this one will take 40 percent okay again temperature they can actually cool down quite a bit and just remain exactly the same their form won't really change they will stay pretty much as is again keep them warmer if you can obviously they will appreciate it but you know, cooler temperatures, no problem. This plant will be absolutely fine. Not only that, but this plant also ships quite well. Um, I know a lot of people just receive the plants in pretty much photographic condition when they come out of the boxes. And I don't really know why that is. I guess that is just the tuberous root system. The leaves just have a very solid structure, but you know, you can generally condense these leaves quite far down and within a day, they'll just plump straight back up. So for that reason, these plants do ship very well indeed. But honestly, this is the easiest anthurium I think I could recommend for you guys. Bonus point, these are actually not that expensive. I know they probably look beautiful and gorgeous and exotic, and they are, but they're really not that expensive. They're one of the more cheaper anthuriums that you can pick up from plant stores or online sellers. So please keep an eye out for these. If you've wanted to get one of these and you're worried about care, don't be. Pick one up you will be absolutely fine. So my scores for the Anthurium Clarinervium are as follows. Light, I'm giving this Anthurium a five out of five for light because as I say, it can take really not a lot of light at all. Watering, again, it can really tolerate an underwatering, so it's very hardy in that sense. Five out of five. Humidity, I give that a 4.5. Temperature, again, this plant can cool down, no problems at all. And I've given that therefore a four out of five. Last but not least, this plant ships fantastically. It will probably come out of the box the same way it went in the box. So I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5 for shipping, which gives the plant an average score of 4.6 out of 5, which is a very, very easy rare plant in my opinion. And my number one easy rare house plant on my list today, I have for you guys one of my favorite plants. It is pretty much, I don't want to say unkillable because I mean really no plant is unkillable, but this plant will tolerate nearly everything and that is the monstera deliciosa thai constellation 
Please bear with mine. It is young, it's juvenile. This is the biggest leaf it has, which is honestly getting there. It hasn't split yet, but I actually think that the next leaf it produces may have a split, so I'm super excited for that. So I'm now gonna take you through why this plant is so unbelievably easy to take care of. This plant can cope with honestly very, very low light. A lot of you might not expect that, but it's very, very true. Obviously, give it as much as you can with any plant, but it will tolerate low light. In addition to that, this plant will take underwatering quite a lot. This one I have here is quite dry. Uh, it probably needs water, to be honest. I might water it after this video. This plant really can take a hit on the watering front. The stems are actually very, very um, hardy, I would say. It's similar, sort of, to a bilatite in the way that they're very, very rigid and hard but it can really, really take an underwatering as well. Not only that, but the leaves on this feel very different to a standard, you know, Monstera Deliciosa for me. They feel almost like woody in texture, which makes them even hardier as well. So they can take a little bit more of a punch. And because the leaves are structured that way, it also helps with humidity and temperature. Humidity, they can take 40%, no problem. Obviously boost the humidity if you want to grow a little bit quicker, but it will take low humidity, no problem. The thing about temperature is these plants will go right down to like five degrees if they need to and they will be okay they can actually from what i've heard they can tolerate a small amount of frost which is like insane to be honest with you you would never expect it from this plant i mean i don't advise leaving it out in the frost you know keep your plants warm but generally speaking this plant will hold you down if you have a temperature drop in your house or the heating goes off or something goes wrong this plant will be absolutely golden. Similar reasons again for the leaves and the roots. This plant ships fantastically. I've never really seen anybody have problems with it as such. This one was shipped in absolutely fantastic condition. It was exactly the same when it came out of the box as when it went in the box. So that's a very, very good sign of shipping. So generally speaking, this plant is just so reliable and so beautiful and to be honest, quite sought after. So if you can only pick one rare plant and you just need it to be the easiest plant, this for me, without a doubt, is my number one one easy rare houseplant. So as you might expect, this houseplant has an extremely, extremely high rating for the following categories. Up first, we have light. This plant, without a doubt, gets a five out of five for light because it will pretty much tolerate nearly anything. Similarly, on watering, I give this a 4.5 out of five because it can tolerate underwatering very, very well indeed and will sit there dry for a little bit before it even complains at you. Humidity as well. This can take very surprisingly low humidity and I think that is due to the woody, you know, texture leaves. Temperature, again, this plant can cool down an awful lot. It can handle five degrees, no problem, and it can even tolerate a very, very small amount of frost. Shipping, it is probably going to come out of the box more or less the same way as it went in. So I've given shipping a 4.5 out of 5, which means that the plant's overall score out of 5 is a whopping 4.8 eight out of five. What a winner. And that concludes my top 10 easy rare house plants video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found some plants that you can maybe safely put on your wish list now that you think, you know, okay, I got this. I can take care of this. This isn't so bad because really that's the aim with this video. So I hope I've been able to help you guys out. This video obviously has featured only aroids. That is mainly because aroids can be quite easy to care for, you know, in comparison to a lot of other plants. Later on in the future, I may make an easy house plants video on a different different kind of plant so we'll see what happens with that and we'll see what plants I have in because I need to own them in order to provide the care and work out you know how easy or difficult they are but if you like this video then please feel free to give it a like and if you'd like to see any more of my content then please feel free to hit that subscribe button thank you very very much for watching this video I really hope it helped you out and I will see you next week bye guys